everyone. We welcome you on this Sunday morning for uh, the Indian Radiologist Journal Club. This is something which we were doing almost every month last year, where we used to take one article with relevant topic, and one of our expert used to review that article uh, for the next one hour or so, get into the details of those articles, include their experience into it, and also show a few cases relevant about it. So continuing the same thing, we have started the journal club this year as well, and we'll have it every Sunday uh, morning, which will be the first Sunday of every month and morning 10 to 11 a.m. And for this, uh, we have with us Dr. Chatali Parikh, and the article she is going to take is posteromedial corner of the knee, the neglected corner. Dr. Chatali is a well-known speaker uh, on, especially on Indian Radiologist Forum. Her videos are the ones which are liked and subscribed the most. So she is one of the most popular speakers, and uh, we have been learning MSK with her. Uh, she is consultant radiologist for Pulse Chain of Diagnostic Centers. And uh, she has done her fellowship in musculoskeletal uh, diagnostic and intervention radiology at InnoVision Imaging Mumbai. She has received Dr. Aaron Goyal Gould Medal for Best Paper Presentation on MSK Interventions. And she was also selected as one of the best speaker at RADAC Speaker Competition of Radiology Review Course. So we welcome you, uh, Dr. Chaitali, and over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mithisha, for this wonderful introduction. Uh, good morning to all of you. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. At the outset, I would like to first thank um, the Indian Radiologist team and Dr. Mithusha for this wonderful invitation. Uh, I know this is a bright Sunday morning and most of you would be having better plans for the Sunday morning. So I would like to, I will try to keep this session short and not extend it too much. So without wasting any time, um, let's begin with the session, which is so this, uh, the journal that we're going to discuss is predominantly concentrating on the posterior medial corner. Now, why uh, I have mentioned it as a less discussed corner. First of all, we do not report a lot about the corners in our day-to-day -day routine life for the knee joint. So you've got a posterior lateral and a posterior medial corner. However, in recent times, uh, there has been awareness of the posterior lateral corner and we are putting it in our reports, which is helping the orthopods. But Posterior medial corner is again something which we are not looking at all in our day to day practice. That corner is also important for the orthopods for the stability of the knee. So, we are going to today discuss about this corner. Um, the article which we are predominantly concentrating on is the posterior medial corner of the knee, the neglected corner, which has been published in Radiographics in 2015 and written by Ryan Lindquist and Ital. Another similar article that we have is um, the posterior lateral and posterior medial corner injuries of the knee, which was published in MRI Clinics of North America in 2014 and written by Daniel Geiger and et al. The reason I'm not predominantly or primarily dis discussing this article is because it covers both posterior lateral and posterior medial corner. So anyone who's interested in understanding both of these corners from the basics, this is a really good article. But for today, we are only concentrating on posterior medial corner of the knee. So posterior medial corner, um, before I start, what I'm going to do is first I'll be explaining the anatomy on the slides. Then I will be switching over to a normal anatomy scan. Then we will discuss about the posterior medial corner injuries again on the PPT slide. And then again, I'll switch back to the abnormal scans. So I'll be switching my screen between the PPT slide and the um, DICOM uh, viewer so that we can look at the scans as well. So posterior medial corner has got five components, uh, semimembranosis, so we've got semimembranosis and its expansions, posterior oblique ligament or the POL, oblique popliteal ligament or the OPL, posterior medial joint capsule. And the fifth component is varying between the articles. So there is um, still a bit of research that has been going on about the components of the posterior medial corner. And the fifth component, some articles mention posterior horn of the medial meniscus, whereas some articles mention meniscotibial component of deep fibers of medial collateral ligament. Now, what do I mean by 
deep fibers of medial collateral ligament and what is the menisco tibial component i am just discussing this part of uh, sorry so these are the four major components which we will be looking at and since we won't be discussing medial collateral ligament too much later so i'll might as well just show it to over here so um, we all know that medial collateral ligament so we have always been looking at this outer structure of the medial collateral ligament which we very well see on the coronal images of mri scan the outer long linear structure which which is seen on a single image those are actually the superficial fibers of medial collateral ligament you also have the deeper fibers of medial collateral ligament which is relatively shorter ligament it has got two components so it goes from the medial femur up to the medial meniscus which is the menisco femoral component and then it goes from the medial meniscus to the medial aspect of tibia which is the menisco tibial component so there is a deeper fiber of medial collateral ligament besides the routine superficial fibers of medial collateral ligament whose injuries we are reporting in day to day life now it has been said that the menisco tibial component of the deep fibers of medial collateral ligament is also one of the component of posterior medial corner however some articles suggest that it is not a part of the posterior medial corner but it is just one of the structures that supports the posterior medial corner okay so what exactly is posterior medial corner to begin with uh, all the area that is extending posterior to the so along the posterior margin of medial collateral ligament and the medial margin of posterior cruciate ligament so the area that is spanning between these two margins is your posterior medial corner anteriorly it goes up to the posterior medial menisco capsular junction or the posterior horn of medial meniscus posteriorly it goes up to the semi membranous tendon so from the posterior margin of mcl along the posterior Uh, menisco capsular junction or the posterior horn of medial meniscus medially up to the medial margin of posterior cruciate ligament and posteriorly involving the semi membranous tendon so this entire area is my posterior medial corner now again we look at the diagrammatic image and along with that an axial pd image to understand the anatomy well so here you can see this these are my superficial so this is an axial image axial diagrammatic image you can see the nice large uh, semi semi sorry the nice large meniscus the which is the medial meniscus and here you can see that this is my medial collateral ligament so these are actually nothing but the superficial fibers of medial collateral ligament just posterior to the superficial fibers of medial collateral ligament you have your one component which is the posterior oblique ligament or the pol okay now this pol goes posteriorly and this forms the posterior medial menisco capsular junction further on when you extend the posterior medial menisco capsular junction laterally what you get is your oblique popliteal ligament okay behind your posterior medial capsule what you have is your semi membranous tendon so these are the structures of your posterior medial corner so coming on to the pd image now you can see there is a nice black line that is going sorry so you can see there is a nice black line that is going over here the anterior half of the black line is actually a superficial medial collateral ligament and the posterior half of the black line is what is the posterior oblique ligament so this is actually almost at the level of knee joint line where we are looking at the in the lower most part of the femoral condyle and so this is my posterior oblique ligament as it goes inferiorly it will join with the posterior medial capsule of the joint and here further there is a lateral expansion that goes from the capsule this is your oblique popliteal ligament so this is my oblique popliteal ligament this is my posterior oblique ligament and this is nothing but my mcl okay so this is mcl now here what you see everybody is aware where to look for the baker cyst so what you have is the medial gastrocnemius tendon and just anterior to it this is the semi membranous tendon and this is where your baker cyst is actually going to come out right so semi membranous tendon is over here and what you see this is your posterior medial capsule so once again revising semi membranous tendon 
posterior oblique ligament so this is your pol i'm really sorry i'm very bad at this this is my opl that is oblique popliteal ligament and this is my posterior medial capsule so these are the major components of the these are the major components of the posterior medial corner and along with that you can appreciate very well on the diagrammatic representation as well now as you go one step inferior you can see that this posterior oblique ligament is now actually merging with the posterior medial capsule okay so this is how the posterior oblique ligament will merge with the capsule this is the semi membranosus tendon from the posterior medial capsule and the semi membranosus tendon the structure that will arise is the oblique popliteal ligament now semi membranosus tendon itself has got five different insertions or five arms what are those arms the first one and the most important one is the direct or the principal arm which attaches to the tubercle on the posterior medial tibial condyle or in the groove just above the tubercle next what you have is the anterior arm next is the capsular arm inferior arm and the oblique popliteal ligament expansion now of these it is difficult to differentiate the direct arm from the anterior arm on mr images next what we're going to look at is the posterior oblique ligament uh, as i've already mentioned it is just posterior to the mcl origin arising from the adductor tubercle of femur there are some variations in the origin of the pol but it is more or less close to the adductor tubercle it runs posterior inferiorly and attaches to the posterior medial capsule and the posterior horn of medial meniscus just as we've shown before so again just another diagrammatic representation so that you can understand the pol very nicely so here this is my mcl in black and this yellow dotted line what you see so this yellow dotted line is my pol you can see the black dotted line is actually nothing but the capsule of the joint and the pol will eventually go and merge with the capsule of the joint on the posterior medial aspect right so this is how it is going to go and merge with the capsule over here and what you see over here this is my semi membranosus tendon opl arises from the capsular arm so i've already told you it arises from the semi membranosus so it actually arises from the capsular arm of the semi membranosus tendon and its lateral expansion it goes superolaterally and attaches to the fabula or the posterior lateral joint capsule or plantaris muscle so now just let's go back and look at a normal anatomy scan so let's just look at the normal anatomy scan and understand the anatomy better so now i hope my screen is visible to all of you um so here what we see is this is an actual pd image okay i'll just take an so sagittal fat saturated image also so this is actually my medial femur my medial tibia my anterior and posterior horn of medial meniscus and what you see over here this is my posterior medial menisco capsular junction area and the posterior medial corner area right now let's understand the anatomy so the coronal image will be more like a scout for you so you can understand at what level we are looking at So now here as we are going from cranial to caudal okay this is my medial femur and what you see this structure over here so you can see there is a nice black structure a long black structure over here okay the anterior half of the long black structure is actually my medial collateral ligament the posterior half of the long black structure is actually my posterior oblique ligament so this entire long black structure you can just divide it into half the anterior half is the medial collateral ligament the posterior half is the posterior oblique ligament now when you correlate on the coronal images so what you see this entire structure this is nothing but my superficial medial collateral ligament okay and as i go posteriorly now what i see over here this is not the mcl it is actually the posterior oblique ligament so you can see this is my posterior oblique ligament this is my posterior oblique ligament this is my posterior oblique ligament and now it will go and merge with the capsule in this region so as i go below okay you can see that how this posterior oblique ligament is nicely merging with my posterior capsule so this is my posterior medial joint capsule and it's nicely going and merging with the posterior medial joint capsule now again we go up so here what we see is the now let's look at the second component 
So this is my medial gastrocnemius and what you see over here, this is my semimembranosus tendon. Now again, as I'm going inferiorly, okay, before and before reaching up to the joint line. So here, if you'll see, we are still above the joint line. We're about almost a centimeter or so above the joint line. You can see that there is a small black structure that is separating out from the semimembranosus tendon. Now, this is the capsular arm. So this nice black structure, which is going towards the capsule, this is the capsular arm of the semimembranosus tendon. And if you'll see, it will go and join the capsule in this region. Now, as you go inferiorly, okay, so this is my main tendon. This is my capsular arm. Now, as I go inferiorly, I've already told you that the anterior and the direct uh, arm are not well differentiated on an MRI. but Let's try whatever we can make out. So here, again, I'm going up. Okay. At this level, so you can see this is my semimembranosus muscle, myotendinous junction, and this is the semimembranosus tendon. Now, as I go over here, you can see that there is a nice groove. Okay. So there is a tubercle over here and a nice groove over here, and the tendon is going and attaching on the tubercle and the adjacent groove. Now, let's come down to this level. So from as we go from HL, the two arms are where. So this is the all the rest of the arms, and this is the capsular arm. As you go inferiorly, it actually forms a wider fan-shaped structure, okay, which goes and attaches like this. Now, of this fan-shaped structure, what you see, this is my this is my direct arm, which goes and attaches into the tubercle. So see, it's well nicely coinciding. So this is my direct arm which is attaching to the tubercle and the adjacent groove what you have is few fibers are going anteriorly so these are this is my anterior arm of the semimembranosus tendon so my direct arm okay let me just label it so that you guys don't get confused so this is the direct arm this is the anterior arm okay now as i go inferiorly you can see there are few thin fibers which are extending inferiorly these are actually difficult to appreciate, but they go deep to the POL. So this is my POL uh, and the MCL and they go deep to it and they will attach just above the MCL region. So there are thin fibers that go down and this is nothing but my inferior arm. Right. So again, we come, come back up. Let me label this also. Okay. So this entire thing, as we go back up, this is my semimembranosus tendon. Okay. Now, as you go inferiorly, you can see that an arm is coming out of the main semimembranosus tendon going towards the capsule. So this is my capsular arm. As you go further inferiorly, the entire semimembranosus tendon becomes like a fan-shaped structure. The, what, the tendon that attaches onto the tibia posteromedially in the posteromedial tubercle and adjacent groove, this is my direct arm. Few fibers will go anteriorly and attach to the anterior aspect of tibia. In fact, these few fibers, what I'm talking about that go anteriorly, are better seen on a coronal image. So here, so you can see this nice ovoid black structure over here. So this is nothing but my anterior arm. So these structures that are going anteriorly is actually the anterior arm. Anterior arm normally has some hyperintense signal inside it because of the magic angle artifact. So this should not be mistaken for a tendinosis or a tear. Similarly, because of the fan-shaped attachment, you can see that there is some intrinsic linear hyperintense signal over here. You can very well appreciate. That is again because of the fan-shaped attachment and should not be mistaken as a tear. And few fibers extend inferiorly and this becomes the inferior arm. So now we've discussed POL, we've discussed semimembranosus tendon. Now let's look at the OPL or the oblique popliteal ligament. So this is my capsular arm. This is my posteromedial capsule. Okay. This is the posteromedial meniscal capsular junction. And what you can see, this black line going all the way, circular line, this is nothing but your posterior horn of medial meniscus. So this is the posterior medial junction or the capsule. Okay. Now this structure, 
that you see that is coming out like this this black structure is which is actually nothing but going along the capsule like a thickening of the capsule this is your opl okay now opl actually traverses all the way to the top so it actually goes superolaterally and attaches somewhere to the posterior posterior lateral femoral condyle or the adjacent fabula now because it is traversing from medial to the lateral aspect it is not only an important component for a posterior medial corner but it is also an important uh, component and provides stability to the posterior lateral corner as well so this is my oblique popliteal ligament so we have discussed all uh, the major components so again revising quickly we have going from top to bottom what you see first is your posterior oblique ligament behind the mcl as you go inferiorly you begin to see the semi membranosus we have discussed all the arms of semi membranosus as you go inferiorly the posterior oblique ligament will join with the posterior medial junction or the posterior medial capsule from the capsular arm and the posterior medial capsule what arises is your oblique popliteal ligament so once we have discussed with the anatomy now let's just go back to the powerpoint presentation and look at what is the importance of these structures and why are we actually reading them in the first place so what are the functions of posterior medial capsule um the first thing is let's discuss about semi membranosus because semi membranosus is the main dynamic so it is the main dynamic stabilizer of the posterior medial capsule the rest of the stabilizers that is your ligaments uh, they are actually the static stabilizers whereas semi membranosus being a tendon it's a dynamic stabilizer of the posterior medial corner it causes internal rotation of tibia during flexion another important job is that it pulls out the posterior horn of medial meniscus during flexion and prevents its injury by compression between the medial femoral and tibial condyle so when so the if you would have noticed the direct and the anterior arm they actually go behind the posterior medial capsule and insert onto the tibia plus it also has a capsular expansion so semi membranosus tendon has got some insertions onto the posterior medial capsule the posterior medial meniscal capsular junction in turn is attached to the posterior horn of medial meniscus so whenever there is a contraction of the semi membranosus which happens during flexion of the knee it will put a traction on the posterior horn and pull the posterior horn further peripherally so that it does not get squashed between the medial femur and medial tibia during flexion that's how it prevents the posterior horn medial meniscus injuries during flexion now what are the functions of posterior medial corner as a whole now pmc is actually taut in extension and lax in flexion we can see the pmc structures in fact the posterior uh, posterior oblique ligament and everything very well because we perform the knee mri in extension position and they are actually taut in extension it is an important stabilizer for valgus stress in extension so the important thing is that in extension it is an important valgus stress stabilizer by valgus stress means what is valgus your distal limb is actually going away from the midline which means that whenever there is a valgus stress in, in fact even if you try to just put a valgus stress on your knee if there is a stress that is felt along the medial compartment of the knee joint so that so it actually stabilizes against the valgus stress so that the medial compartment does not open up whenever there is a stress on the medial side of the knee it is lax in flexion so per se it does not have an import or it does not provide a lot of stability in case of a flexed knee hence mcl becomes the primary stabilizer of valgus stress in flexion so in a uh, extended knee besides mcl even your pmc is an important stabilizer for the valgus stress whereas in the flex knee it is predominantly only mcl which is a primary stabilizer for the valgus stress what is the use of this knowledge whenever there is a, a medial compartment knee pain uh, what the orthopod is going to do is a valgus stress test or an abduction stress test now this valgus stress test is nothing but the orthopod is going to apply a valgus and an abduction force on the knee joint this is done at 0 and 30 degree flexion if there is opening up of the knee joint which indicates that there is valgus instability 
in at 0 degrees okay it is because of the mcl uh, sorry at 30 degrees it is because of the mcl injury so as we know the uh, inflection mcl forms the primary stabilizer of the valgus stress so in 30 degrees it is the mcl which is injured if there is a valgus instability if there is no valgus instability at 0 degrees which means in extension it indicates that your pmc is intact but if there is a valgus instability even in extension it indicates that added to mcl even the pmc is injured so that's how you can differentiate between the valgus stress and abduction stress uh, between the uh, mcl and pmc injuries on the valgus stress test i'll just repeat this again so in valgus stress test you apply the valgus stress on the knee joint in flexion that is 30 degree flexion and in extension if in extension there is no instability it means that your pmc is intact but if in extension there is valgus instability meaning there is opening up of the medial knee joint space on valgus stress it indicates that added to mcl there is also pmc or the posterior medial corner injury other functions of pmc is that it is a secondary stabilizer for anterior translation so obviously we all know the primary stabilizer is nothing but your anterior cruciate ligament it acts as a secondary stabilizer for anterior translation so it can provide anterior stability in acl deficient knee so this is important most of the times whenever the acl knee acl uh, sorry uh, most of the times whenever the acl is torn you will get anterior instability some patients however we found that they what they have found is even in acl deficient knees there is not much of an anterior instability which is because the pmc is actually now acting as an important stabilizer and preventing excess of anterior translation it also provides uh, it also prevents uh, excessive posterior translation and similarly hence it can provide posterior stability in posterior in, in pcl deficient knees so three important things it is an important stabilizer for the valgus stress particularly in, in extension it is a secondary stabilizer for anterior translation and is useful to provide anterior stability in acl deficient knees it is a it is also a stabilizer for posterior translation and can provide posterior stability in pcl deficient knees so this is what are the functions of the pmc now um okay so what is the bottom line why are we learning all of this stuff this is because pmc injuries if not repaired can cause acl or pcl graft failures so just like what you've heard about posterior lateral corner why is posterior lateral corner important to be addressed because if the patient is undergoing an acl or a pcl reconstruction surgeries and if the posterior lateral corner is not addressed there is a risk of graft failure in the future similarly if the patient is undergoing acl and pcl graft repair and the pmc injury is not addressed it can result into graft failures because as we have seen it is a secondary stabilizer both for the anterior and posterior translation okay um so pmc injuries isolated injuries are rare so isolated injuries are rare, rare. what we usually get is pmc is injured with other ligaments like acl PCL and your MCL. Whenever there is a PMC injury, it can result into chronic valgus instability in extension. For obvious reasons, it is an important valgus stress stabilizer in extension. Uh, it can also cause another instability pattern, which is called as the anteromedial rotatory instability. Okay, it sounds it sounds complex, but it is not. What happens is mainly there is uh, instability of the tibia, so there is external rotation. okay and anterior subluxation of tibia relative to the femur now if you can understand it is actually uh, anterior so it prevents um, valgus stress and it also prevents excessive anterior translation now if the pmc is injured obviously the knee will start going outwards so there is the the tibia will start going outwards so it goes into external rotation and there is obviously anterior translation will also happen so there is anterior subluxation of tibia relative to the femur patients who have symptomatic amri they usually have both mcl and pmc injuries so uh, and patients with symptomatic uh, 
AMRI will almost always have the POL component as injured. So other components are also injured, but it is found that POL is almost always injured whenever patient has a symptomatic anteromedial rotatory instability. Uh, so as I've told you again, AMRI is caused by injuries of both of these. Now what happens is, why again this is important? Usually isolated MCL injury, meaning nothing else is injured. It's only the medial collateral ligament which is injured. These patients are usually treated conservatively. But whenever there is a simultaneous PMC injury, there is increased chances of developing a symptomatic AMRI. And hence, these patients actually require surgical management. So this is again important. Only MCL injury is usually treated conservatively. But the treatment changes to a surgical management if there is an associated PMC corner injury because there is increased chances of development of anteromedial rotatory instability. And because of the development of AMRI, there is some instability in the medial compartment of the joint and it eventually results into an early medial compartment OA. So this is again a take-home point that why we need to address PMC injuries. Um, one is we've already discussed that if not repaired, it can result into graft failures. Another thing, so this is when the patient is undergoing surgery, but we need to add something else in the surgery. Whereas the second point is where actually the plan was conservative, but now the plan has become surgical because along with MCL, there is a PMC injury and it can cause symptomatic AMRI. So it, eventually the patient's management will completely change from conservative to surgical. The next thing is similarly, uh, you have if there are isolated PCL injuries, usually we treat them conservatively because PCL is known to heal very well or remodel very well. But if there is a simultaneous PMC injury along with a PCL injury, again, a surgical management is considered or can be considered in this patient depending upon the clinical examination because these patients usually develop symptomatic AMRI and eventually they will have medial compartment OA. So third point, third important take-home point is PL, PCL plus PMC injuries, again, a surgical management can be considered. So these are the three major reasons that we need to address PMC injuries. Now let's just look at the cases. So we are just going to look at a couple of examples of posterior medial corner injury, ranging from low grade to high grade injuries, so that all of you just get an idea that how exactly these injuries look like. Now. Um, most of the information regarding a posterior medial corner you will get on a sagittal and axial image. First, obviously, we look at a fat saturated image. So I'm going from medial to lateral. So basically, the reason we look at the fat saturated image is to understand where all which all areas are showing injury. So the most medial most structure, this is a very important thing which all of you should actually put a habit of uh, looking at it. This gives a very good idea if there is any PM. P, uh, MCL and a PMC injury. So if I'll just put a coronal image over here. So here you can see that this image is actually correlating along my MCL and posteriorly will be my PMC. So when you see a lot of soft tissue edema, always go and look at the uh, medial collateral ligament and the posterior oblique ligament in such patients. So here you can see that there is obviously some injury to the MCL and the POL. Now as we go further medially, what we see is there is some edema. So this is my posterior horn. This is my posterior medial joint capsule and the junction. So there is some soft tissue edema in the posterior medial joint capsule and junction. Uh, and as you go further medially or towards the midline, what you see is that there is an ACL tear in this patient. The PCL looks intact. Okay, And then when you go laterally, what you have is your posterior lateral uh, compartment or oh, sorry the lateral femoral tibial compartment which we won't be discussing so here you have so this patient on the first look has an acl injury there is some um, soft tissue edema along the posterior medial corner and there is surely some injury of the medial collateral ligament and the posterior oblique ligament which is also a component of the posterior medial corner so now let's just look at the axial images because most of these structures are well recognized on axial images. So here I've already told you what you see is a nice jet black line. Okay, the anterior black line is slightly thicker. 
Now the anterior half is your MCL. The posterior half is your posterior oblique ligament. Now we've seen the uh, we've seen the normal images, and it's actually pretty thin. So this is how it. Th this is the thin. This is how thin it should be. The posterior oblique ligament should be as thin as this. Okay. Mm -hmm. But here, what you see is that it is thickened. There is hyperintense signal within. And also, when I come over here, I can see that there is a lot of soft tissue edema. So I know that at least there is some load to intermediate grade posterior, posterior oblique ligament injury. Okay. Obviously, there is injury to the fibers of the medial collateral ligament with soft tissue edema. As you go inferiorly, again, you can see that there is some edema in the posterior medial junction or the posterior medial capsule. So here I can see that there is edema in the posterior medial capsule. So there is at least low grade injury of the posterior medial meniscal capsular junction. The posterior horn of the medial meniscus looks pretty okay. And now let's look at the, um, I'll just get this out. So now let's look at the semimembranosis tendon. So the semimembranosis tendon in fact looks pretty okay. So there is not much of an injury. This is as I've told you, do not label this as a tear. This is nothing but the magic angle effect of the anterior arm of semimembranosis tendon. So the semimembranosis tendon looks okay. And finally, what you see is your posterior, uh, sorry, your oblique popliteal ligament, which also looks pretty much okay. Always go on the sagittal fat saturated images and look for any edema in this region. So there is not much of edema that is there. Okay. So in this region, this is my posterior oblique ligament and that there is not much of soft tissue edema here. So this is a pretty normal, uh, sorry, this is a pretty normal oblique popliteal ligament of the OPL. So coming down, what, what all stuff this patient is having? One is obviously the most important is that the patient has a proximal third ACL tear. Besides that, the patient has low to intermediate grade injury of the posterior oblique ligament or the POL. Uh, there is some low grade injury of the posterior medial meniscal capsular junction with some soft tissue edema. So, added to ACL injury, this patient also has low to intermediate grade. Uh, sorry, besides that, this patient also has a low grade medial collateral ligament injury at the femoral attachment. So, you've got an you've got a full thickness ACL tear. You've got a low grade femoral attachment MCL injury. And you've got low to intermediate grade posterior medial corner injury, particularly involving your POL and your posterior medial junction capsule. Okay, so this is the first scan. I hope all of you are clear with this. Let's go at the look at the second scan now. Okay, again, we look at first only the fat saturated image to understand the structures that are injured. Now, this, uh, I'll just open a coronal so that you understand which will act like a scout for all of you. So, just look at this image, okay? Use this only for a scout. So, here I'm coming from all the way from the periphery and look at the amount of soft tissue edema that is there, okay? So, we are, this is the bone. So, this is where my MCL and my POL is supposed to be located. And you can see that there is a lot of soft tissue edema over here. So, I know that there is at least intermediate to high grade injury of the MCL and POL. I can make that judgment just on this one image. Now, as I go further medially, uh, sorry, further towards the midline, what I can see is that my posterior medial cap, uh, meniscal capsular junction is also showing a lot of soft tissue edema. Okay. Uh, this is where my semimembranosis is inserting. There is some soft tissue edema in the semimembranosis direct arm insertion as well. So you can see this is my nice tubercle. This is a small groove. So this is the, at least there is some low grade injury of the semimembranosis. And as I go uh, here, you can see that even posterior to PCL, where there is, there is a, some amount of soft, soft tissue edema. So there is at least a low grade OPL injury. Now, besides that, the most important thing is this patient has a PCL avulsion fracture with an intermediate grade ligament injury itself. And obviously, there is a full thickness ACL tear. You can see the ligament fibers are flipped over here. So, this I'll show you well on the PD image. So, here you can see that there is a nice PCL avulsion fracture with an intermediate grade PCL injury. There is really no fibers that is attaching 
there are no anterior cruciate ligament fibers that are attaching at the femoral attachment so it's a full thickness acl tear and you can see that the ligament fibers are actually flipped in the anterior intercondylar notch now let's look at the coronal images so again we are going from anterior to posterior this is my mcl you can see see there is an injury here in fact there is a full thickness tear of my superficial fibers of the mcl so there is a full thickness mcl tear now up let's put the actual image so you can understand at what level we are looking at okay so this is the site of injury now this is the entire mcl and pol you can divide it into half so this is my mcl this is my pol now what i'm looking at is the pol and you can see that there is a high grade tear of the pol as well okay this is a high grade tear of the pol so this patient is actually not only having a a near full thickness tear or in fact a full thickness tear of the superficial mcl but there is also a high grade tear of the posterior oblique ligament as you go down on the axial images you can see that the posterior oblique ligament is injured here also the capsule is not looking good so this is the menisco capsular junction it is thickened we've already seen that there is a lot of soft tissue edema in the menisco capsular junction so there is a intermediate grade posterior medial menisco capsular junction injury on the actual images you get you can get magic angle artifact here but this is surely not a magic angle artifact we've already seen that this coincides to the injury so there is a low grade injury to the direct arm of the semi membranosus tendon and along with that this is my capsular arm okay and this is my opl so here you can see that there is low grade injury of the opl as well with a lot of soft tissue edema in that region so here there is a lot of soft tissue edema it's not a tear okay it's just a low grade injury of the opl so now summarizing we have a full thickness acl tear at the femoral attachment we have a pcl avulsion fracture at the tibial attachment we have a full thickness proximal third fiber tear of the superficial mcl we have a high grade tear of the pol we have intermediate grade injury of the posterior medial menisco capsular junction we have low grade injury of the direct arm of semi membranosus and we have low grade injury of the opl so it's practically involving all the components of your posterior medial corner so while putting in the impression you not only have to mention about your acl pcl and mcl injury but you also need to tell them that there is at least intermediate to high grade posterior medial corner injury this patient will undergo an acl graft repair may or may not undergo a pcl avulsion fracture fixation but this patient will surely need a acl graft repair and if the posterior medial corner is not addressed this patient can land up into a graft failure in the future so this is how you need to correlate everything and put it together in your report now let's go for the third quiz quickly since now you understood everything i'll be just running a bit fast so looking at the sagittal images again the medial aspect this is my mcl this is my pol you can see very nicely this is my mcl this is my pol mcl is showing at least a low grade injury pol looks like an intermediate grade injury at least on this one image as i go uh, further towards the midline so there, there is a posterior medial menisco capsular junction injury in fact this patient also has a ramp lesion so you can see that there is a discrete fluid signal in the posterior medial menisco capsular junction so this is nothing but your nice ramp lesion okay um your semi membranosus over here looks okay so not much of a semi membranosus injury and as you go further towards the midline the opl also looks pretty much okay so there is not much of soft tissue edema so obviously not a intermediate or a high grade opl injury uh, let's look at the axial images so here as i told you the mcl is just going to be like a low grade injury if you look at the coronal images also so what this nice black structure that you see going all the way through and through this is your mcl okay um now if i go slightly posteriorly you see a lot of injury over here 
this is not your mcl this is your posterior oblique ligament so in fact mcl is a low grade injury but your posterior oblique ligament is intermediate to high grade injury so you can see the entire thickness of the fibers is involved it is not a tear but it is surely injured it is almost three times the normal thickness so uh, in, uh, sorry mcl is a low grade pol is intermediate to high grade injury you also have a uh, posterior medial menisco capsular junction injury along with ramp lesion and looking at the semi membranosus already on sagittal we have seen that it's normal even on axial images we have seen that it's pretty normal this is magic angle effect of the anterior arm you can see the direct arm is pretty good and normal and also your opl looks okay right so it's mainly your um, sorry and besides that obviously this patient had a acl tear so to summarize acl tear along with that you have a low grade mcl injury but an intermediate to high grade pol injury okay intermediate grade posterior medial menisco capsular junction injury with posterior medial menisco capsular junction tear which is your ramp lesion and your rest of the components of the pmc corner are good so next let's look at the next case again we are looking at the sagittal fs images going from out uh, going from periphery inwards again from the peripheral image i can i can identify that mcl is at least an intermediate grade injury and my pol is at least intermediate to high grade injury now let's go to uh, towards the midline so here obviously there is um, posterior medial corner injury okay besides when you go towards the midline you can see that probably there is some low grade injury of the semi membranosus but not a tear or a high grade injury some low grade injury of the semi membranosus uh, there is obviously some intermediate grade injury of the opl and besides that what this patient has is an avulsion fracture of the pcl so this is a nice avulsion fracture of the pcl with a very low grade injury to the ligament itself acl per se is not torn may be a low grade injury but surely not a tear we'll confirm that on a sagittal pd image so actually the in fact the acl looks pretty good so acl is not torn low grade pcl injury and a pcl avulsion fracture now with this let's look at your posterior medial corner on the axial images so we've already pretty much diagnosed everything about the posterior medial corner what we're going to do is just confirm our findings uh, i'll just open a coronal image along with this so here now what we see is this is my mcl injury okay it is like uh, so if you see now in this case i'll just first show you the coronal images so you, this is what is your Uh, superficial and deep fibers of mcl so here this is my superficial fiber of mcl okay there is intermediate grade injury at the femoral attachment of superficial fibers of mcl and what you see over here this is your deep fiber of mcl so this is my medial meniscus okay what is this is your menisco so this is my menisco femoral component going from the medial femur so uh, this is my menisco femoral component going all the way from the femur to the medial meniscus and this is my menisco tibial component going from the meniscus to the tibia so if you see that menisco tibial component is like an intermediate grade injury but the menisco femoral component is in fact a full thickness tear so this patient has about a uh, intermediate grade superficial mcl injury but a full thickness tear of the deeper fibers of the menisco femoral component so this is the mcl now as we go um, so this is my intermediate grade mcl intermediate to high grade because deeper fibers is actually a high grade injury and as you go posteriorly what you see this entire thing is your pol so you can see the pol is actually a high grade injury it is really thickened okay so nicely thickened pol and here also you can see a lot of uh, soft tissue edema in it so high grade pol injury and the rest what we have already discussed is your uh, menisco capsular junction injury with a ramp lesion so here this is my so this is my menisco capsular junction injury as i go further inferiorly okay uh, this is my capsular arm so this is my actually opl so you can see that there is a low grade injury to the opl as well okay this is also my opl and there is some soft tissue edema in this region 
so you can appreciate the soft tissue edema adjacent to the opl so it's like a low to intermediate grade opl injury and as you go inferiorly you can see that there is some edema in the direct arm of the semi membranosus here you can appreciate it so there is a low grade semi membranosus insertion injury as well so this patient to summarize has a pcl avulsion fracture with a low grade pcl injury uh, this patient has intermediate to high grade mcl injury particularly involving the deeper fibers of the mcl intermediate to high grade pol injury along with that this patient also has a posterior medial menisco capsular junction injury okay here you can see this and along with that a low grade uh, semi membranosus injury and an opl injury so putting all of this together it is somewhere like an intermediate grade posterior medial corner injury because everything else is low grade except for pol which is a high grade injury so it's putting all together it becomes an intermediate grade tmc corner injury so again this patient will require as we've already told you this is a large pcl fracture so they may actually go and fix the pcl fracture because it's a huge fragment if they want to it is not slight it is not too much displaced so again the management is between conservative versus surgical but if there is a lot of anteromedial instability because a uh, anteromedial rotator instability because this patient has an mcl tear which in which may require a repair and this patient has a pmc injury along with a pcl injury this patient may go for a surgery instead of a conservative management though your pcl avulsion fracture is not displaced too much okay let's look at the last case now again from the peripheral aspect here you can see that my mcl is looking good so maybe it's a low grade injury because there is some soft tissue edema by pol is surely injured like a low to intermediate grade injury there is a lot of meniscal contusion so even the posterior horn of medial meniscus is involved okay there is posterior medial uh, junction injury which is like a low grade and what you see is that the semi membranosus tendon is almost like an intermediate grade contusion so again it's not a tear but it's more thickened so you can see that this is like an intermediate grade semi membranosus tendon contusion and as you go over here No, uh, maybe a low grade opl injury but not too much of an opl injury so further on what you can see is that your pcl is intact maybe a low grade at the tbl attachment but morely there is importantly there is an uh, fragmented avulsion fracture at the anterior cruciate ligament insertion so here let's look on the axial images again so as i told you even on this image that mcl looks to be a low grade injury so you can see the fibers of the mcl are looking good is just that there is a soft tissue edema around it so this is like a grade 1 injury or the sprain this is more of like a grade 2 injury where there is signal within the uh, pol as well as there is thickening of the pol okay semi membranosus as you go down you can see that there is edema within the direct head of the semi membranosus and uh, this is nothing but your intermediate grade semi membranosus tendon contusion and over here you can see the opl is not much injured so the opl looks pretty okay right so this patient also has a uh, intermediate grade posterior medial corner injury because there is an intermediate to high grade uh, sorry there is an intermediate grade pol injury as well as a semi membranosus tendon contusion so both static and dynamic stabilizers are actually injured in this patient so this is how we need to um, put uh, put everything about the posterior medial corner in the reports you may not concentrate a lot on the low grade injuries of opl and all but you need to really mention what is the status of the pms uh, of the pol and the semi membranosus tendon and the posterior medial joint capsule this is really important to be put forth in the report and obviously uh, as a whole the posterior medial corner what is the status of it we need to mention in the report so now let's go back to the slides again for a last couple of uh, slides so now there are mimics of posterior medial corner injury every edema in the posterior medial corner is not a posterior medial corner injury so please get a decent injury a decent uh, history look for other ligament injuries because isolated pmc injuries are rare what can be the mimics of pmc corner injuries ruptured baker's cyst paramenisccal cyst pesanserine bursitis so here what you see is that there is um, a lot of soft tissue edema over here okay 
uh, there is so you can see the whole posterior medial corner there is a lot of soft tissue edema in and around it but what you closely observe is there is some fluid over here okay and then you go on the next image you can see there is a small baker cyst and it's actually nothing but a partially ruptured baker cyst because of which there is a uh, peri uh, baker's fluid leakage which is causing this reactionary soft tissue edema in the posterior medial meniscocapsular junction so this is nothing but your partially ruptured baker cyst next what we have is the another case where you can see that there is fluid and edema uh, something like a cyst in the posterior medial meniscocapsular junction again this is not a pmc injury if you closely observe this patient has a horizontal tear of the posterior horn of medial meniscus and this is nothing but the parameniscal cyst third patient where there is a lot of soft tissue edema uh, in the posterior medial meniscocapsular junction but along with that there is a lot of fluid so if you'll see this is nothing but a pes tendons and there is a lot of fluid that is actually tracking along the pes tendons so this was nothing but pes anserine bursitis when you go more towards the midline uh, these are my pes tendons and what you see now there is not much of edema in the meniscocapsular junction this fluid is nothing but a normal fluid in the posterior medial joint recess but otherwise there is no soft tissue edema in the posterior medial meniscocapsular junction so this was nothing but a case of pes anserine bursitis so the take home points is um, posterior medial corner is an important corner and its injury can change the management of the patient so we need to report them in our reports why it is important one thing is pmc injuries if not repaired can cause acl or pcl graft failures if along with mcl isolated mcl injury there is also pmc injury it can cause symptomatic anteromedial rotatory instability and may require surgical management so again the management is going to change from conservative to surgical and along with pcl injury if there are pmc injuries the management may change from conservative to surgical pmc injuries again it is very important for us to report because we can see them on the mri so we can really help the orthopods in their surgical or conservative management basically in their decision making we play a very important role so always look out for the posterior medial corner and make sure that you correlate well with other ligament injuries do not report any soft tissue edema in the posterior medial corner as a pmc injury isolated injuries are rare but if you see a multi ligament injuries or if you see acl injury or mcl injury please make sure that you've looked at the posterior medial corner along with your posterior lateral corner and reported them in your report thank you thank you dr chetali for this informative discussion and the way you explained made everything very clear and look easy for this very important corner of the knee uh, there are few questions sure. uh, one is are ramp lesions limited to medial meniscus or can occur laterally as well no ramp is by definition it is a posterior medial meniscocapsular junction in fact we have discussed ramp lesion in the radiology journal club in previous year as well uh, which was discussed by another speaker ramp is a uh, 1 to 1 1/2 cm of the posterior medial meniscocapsular junction whenever there is a tear in that junction uh, we call it as a ramp lesion on the posterior lateral aspect you do not have a proper meniscocapsular junction what you have is the popliteal meniscal fascicles and the ligament of risberg so these provide stability to the posterior horn of lateral meniscus and what we develop in them is the risberg rib tear on the lateral meniscus where the tear is present in the posterior horn along the ligament of risberg and this is also seen in acl injuries so ramp is posterior medial risberg rib is posterior or posterior lateral meniscal tear okay uh and the next question is uh, in what imaging finding in knee mri should we start suspecting the pmc injury apart from the graft failure of pre op cases so all the ligament injuries that, that's what i've told you in the last slide all the ligament injuries your acl your pcl your mcl injuries or multi ligament injuries you need to look out for your posterior medial and posterior lateral corners Right, and just last question. Now, uh, like low grade, intermediate grade, and high grade, is it like low grade is sprain, intermediate is a partial tear, and high grade is a complete tear? Is this a universal terminology? E basically, kind of yes, but we don't use it in the report. 
okay uh, what we use it as basically what you are saying is right low grade is g1 high grade uh, intermediate is g2 and high grade is g3 but um if you see a moderately thickened or i mean i have shown you a couple of images where the pol was very much thickened okay but you can't discreetly appreciate a tear but still that goes into a high grade injury okay so it is more on an eyeballing if you just see mild thickening of the ligament with periligamentous edema that's a low grade injury if you see some thickening some intra substance hyperintense signal within the ligament and periligamentous edema that's an intermediate grade injury partial thickness tear you always put it as an intermediate grade tear and you can give a percentage thickness that is involved which will give the orthopod a better idea like if it's less than 50% thickness or if it's more than 50% thickness so uh, broadly speaking g1 g2 g3 is low grade intermediate grade high grade but high grade does not always mean a high grade that it has to be a complete tear there can even be a high grade injury where the ligament is really thickened a lot of hyper intense signal the fibers are mushy and you cannot identify them uh thank you uh, rok chadali once again for taking uh, these doubts as well in detail uh so i think with this we can conclude today's uh, journal club and it was really informative it will be shared on our youtube channel by indian radiologists so you can revise these uh, later on and make your reports even more importantly crisp for the uh, referring physicians 